Brie Larson takes a break from her superhero duties to take us back in time a few decades as she tries to succeed and find balance in being a chemist, a caregiver, and host as she gives lessons in chemistry, the Apple TV Plus limited series. So grab your pencil and children, set the table. Your video review dude needs a moment to himself. When Elizabeth Sott finds herself fired from her lab, she accepts a job as a host on a TV cooking show and sets out to teach a nation of overlooked housewives and the men who are suddenly listening a lot more than recipes. If you're in the mood to find out about a new munchie, stick around to the end of the video. All right, so Apple has had a pretty good track record of bringing stellar stories together with phenomenal actors to tell wildly compelling stories. Now, lessons in chemistry, it's no different. I mean, I was absolutely enthralled and blown away by this series. I mean, it is based on the best-selling novel by Bonnie Garmus. Surprise, surprise, I haven't read it, but my wife did, and she watched the series with me so she could let me know when something was changed, reordered, combined, or just plain left out. And I'll get to some of those in just a bit. Now, this shows us the story of Elizabeth Zott, an incredibly intelligent and talented woman with her master's in chemistry. She works at a lab, typically can run circles around all of the PhD holding chemists, and she also pursues her passion for cooking, which she sees as just chemistry. This story follows a decent period of her life, and we're taken along for the ride on all of the ultimate highs and devastating lows. Brie Larson in the starring role, she magnificently crushes the performance. She captures quirks and idiosyncrasies that make Zot endearing. And then Larson, she also has a wonderful and natural comedic timing. She's also able to deliver quips and remarks that are witty, clever, and so spot on that I laughed out loud many times throughout the show. And she makes it seem effortless, especially because Zot isn't the type of character who cracks jokes. I mean, she notices things and then points them out with just piercing accuracy. I thought it was just plain funny. Now, if the only thing you've ever seen Larson in is a Marvel super suit, then you have been missing out on a very talented actor. I mean, here, she commands the screen. And while the character may sometimes be overbearing or uptight, Larson embodies overflowing charm, drawing me into her world to see it through her eyes so that we're not just watching an actor perform a character, but we're invited in to be part of the experience through her palpable emotions. Now, just like with Paul Walter Hauser in Apple's Blackbird, that limited series, Brie Larson here absolutely owns the performance. She's captivating me with an energy and presence that was haunting and lasting. And the awesome thing about this show is that Larson is just not the only standout. I mean, she is supported by several other superb performances. First up is Lewis Pullman. He's been in a few other high-profile projects like Prime Video's Outer Range and then the box office dominator of 2022, Top Gun Maverick. Now here, he plays a character named Calvin Evans. He's a chemist who is very much a loner and someone who's particular about everything in every way. He's gruff, difficult, opinionated, incredibly intelligent, and also a pushover with a tender heart once he opens up to people. Pullman is a perfect counterpart to Larson. They have amazing chemistry, <laughs> and that pun is very much intended, but they click together. I mean, they create a powerhouse team that doesn't always see eye to eye, but are both equally passionate about research, science, their goals, and then each other. And the love story that builds, it's intense and satisfying, filled with passion and conflict, and expertly portrayed in a way that I believe their love. Now, another standout in this series is Aja Naomi King, who's playing Harriet Sloan, who is Zot's neighbor. Now, the dynamic that she shares, first with Pullman and then with Larson, it's absolutely touching and inspiring. We witness what feels like a genuine friendship that becomes family. Now, King is a dominating presence as her character is a legal aide taking on developers looking to upend their neighborhood. But she's so much more than just that. I mean, she gets to impart a lot of wisdom and love, sharing some heartbreaking and funny moments with Larson as they navigate some pretty big life complications. And two more actors that I want to briefly mention are Patrick Walker, who plays a minister in the local church, and then Alice Halsey, who plays Zot's young daughter. Now, they both exude charisma, and they are instantly endearing. And they even have a portion of the story arc together, which I thought was great to watch. Now, the series is only eight episodes, with the first two dropping together and then weekly releases until the conclusion. Now, most of those episodes, they sit around the 50-ish minute mark. I think you're going to be salivating for more as each episode ends. 
parts of the narrative that feel a little long, especially in the beginning, but that's because we're getting a ton of context on the characters. The beauty thing within this series is that not all of it comes at once or in the very beginning. Now, some of the characters we get to know very well in the present, and then later we're shown their histories, informing mindsets that we witnessed play out and then explaining their drives and trajectories. There are so many scenes that showcase experiments in this, but these are cut together to keep everything flowing efficiently and not bog down the storytelling. Typically, we just get snippets of work being done, overlaid with some narration or maybe inner thoughts, or even just some period-appropriate music to set the mood. Now, something that feels like it is an anomaly for today's usual programming styles is that many shots are not only shot to be jaw-dropping, but they're also executed with the patience to just let the setting speak for the scene. There's one instance in particular that is still burned in my mind because of how peaceful and beautiful it was. Larson and Pullman are sitting on a deck on a lake, and the shot, it's wide, with the dock and the actors centered. That scene, it just sits there for maybe 10 or more seconds. I know that may not seem like a long time, but it actually is quite a while to sit on a static position without dialogue or action. I mean, it's just taking in the natural awesomeness of the lake, the trees, and the sky. Now, maybe you are rolling your eyes at me, but seriously, I mean, it was a memorable shot, and I don't want to let it out of my mind. And just like with any love story or drama, really, for that matter, complications and sadness, they're also powerful devices, just as love and laughter are. Now, there are some heartbreaking and even shocking moments within the show. And if you've not read the novel, they're going to be even more harshly surprising. Now, I appreciate how this informs the storytelling and then also shapes the narrative moving forward. Some elements are revisited regularly, then they're impactful and poignant, but they're not overused or repetitious. Now, I know that whole thing was just incredibly vague, but it really has to be. Otherwise, it ruins the surprise and the impact. There's one episode that feels both like an outlier and right at home all at the same time. This episode focuses mainly on one character, showing us the story from their unique perspective. Now, this is a tough type of episode to pull off because it runs the risk of being very outlandish and stupid, breaking the connection that the story has with reality. Thankfully, though, even though it is odd, it remains faithful in spirit with the book, and it doesn't feel out of place within the show. I enjoy this episode because of the uniqueness of the insight that we get. And it's the only time that this form of storytelling takes place within the series. So just know if that one is not clicking with you, it's not going to be there again and you're not going to have to deal with it. There's so much to like, though, about this series. The entire arc surrounding Zot's TV show, I thought it was fascinating, hilarious, maddening, and then sweet all at once. It provides yet another avenue for the character to grow, and we're taken along the journey each step of the way. There's also a portion of the story that gains prominence in the last few episodes. Now, I think the outcome is going to be obvious, but not disappointing. I was growing with anticipation that the reveal I thought I had guessed was going to happen. It's one of those scenarios that even if you're able to predict the answer, it's satisfying because it's the answer you want to see come to fruition. Now, this is one of those series where I want them to win all of the awards. I mean, I feel like Oprah. You get an award. You get an award. Everybody gets an award. I mean, this show is seriously that engaging and gripping. And for those of you who have read the book, just know that some characters have been combined. Certain elements are shown in a different order than how they're presented in the book. And there are also some interactions, especially between Zot and Evans, that are omitted from the series. But the spirit of the novel is still present within the show, capturing the intensity, the passion, and the feelings that the two shared. Now, based on how my wife felt about the series after reading the book, she was still very satisfied with what was delivered. So overall, Lessons in Chemistry is a moving and inspiring story, helmed by a powerhouse performance by Brie Larson. She commands the scenes, and this performance is a great reminder of why she won an Academy Award with her ability to craft a character that's deep, nuanced, and complex, while also remaining relatable and charismatic. The supporting performances are equally wonderful, building a narrative that will captivate and create laughs along with tears. And while a portion of the story is predictable, and some of the novel's elements have been augmented for the series, this is still a beautifully moving chronicle about a fascinating scientist who uses chemistry to educate and entertain as a mom, cook, and TV host. This is a must-see series. 
And I don't like hyperbole, but this really is one of those holy crap, you've got to see this shows. There is no sex, some brief nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give lessons in chemistry five out of five couches. So what's a series that you would give top ratings to? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so if you have stuck around to see what kind of munchie I found, <laughs> this one's going to be a doozy, I think. Now, I found these at the grocery aisle on a random shelf. It was not anywhere near the candy or the gummies. As you can see, these are Kraft Macaroni and Cheese Gummy Candies. <sighs> now, I'm going to try these for the very first time for you on camera because, um, you know, I think that'll be entertaining. I looked at the ingredients first just to see if I could figure out a flavor. There is nothing that identifies what these might taste like. And I'm seriously hoping they don't taste like cheese. You're probably rooting that they do just to see what kind of face I make. So here we go. All right. Well, these are, well, they look like mac and cheese, is it? There we go there. Let's open this bad boy up. Give it a good smell. Oh, actually, you know what? It, uh, citrusy, fruity, something like that. Uh, they're they're squishy. And I'm trying to get this in focus so that you can actually see it. Uh, yes, very squishy, uh, like a velvety texture, matte kind of texture to it. Ah, one fruit. Um, they smell more fruity than they taste. They have a decidedly plastic flavor to them. Um, Orange-ish. Something else. Maybe a little bit of banana or apple in it. I don't know. As you can see, though, they're not disgusting. Like, I'm not throwing up or anything like that. Which I have tried some of those things, and you've seen them. Hey, you know what? These these aren't great, but they're not half bad. Um, you know, again, it's diabetes in a bag. But if you eat Kraft macaroni and cheese, and I do, which, hey, Kraft, if you're watching and you want to sponsor, totally do that. Um, but anyway, these aren't too bad. You know, <laughs> check them out if you happen to see them in a grocery aisle or something like that. I don't know. Well, hey, uh, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me. I'm going to enjoy some more Kraft Macaroni Cheese Gummies. Mmm.